Okay, let's take a look at solving a force problem where there is a coefficient of friction between all surfaces. Here we have a one kilogram block sitting on top of a two kilogram block. The one kilogram block is tied to a wall to the left so it's not free to move. The two kilogram block is free to move and is being pulled to the right with a force of 100 newtons. So the question is, what is the acceleration on the one on the two kilogram block in this problem? We will proceed by drawing free body diagrams for each of the objects in our problem. So I'm going to draw the free body diagram for the one kilogram block. Here we have one kilogram, and I have a downward force equal to m m one g, the mass of the block times gravitational acceleration. I have an upward force called the normal force, which I'm going to call N1, the normal force on block one. I need to be careful not just call it N because there may be another normal force in the problem when we draw the free body diagram for the second object. There's going to be a tension to the left in this problem, T is holding that block in place, and there's going to be a friction force on this block from the contact between the two surfaces. Trying to figure out which direction the surface friction force goes is one of the most important things in a friction problem. Here, just imagine as you tug on the two degree, two kilogram block, if that string wasn't there holding the one kilogram block, which direction would it want to move? It would want to move to the right. And so what is causing it to move to the right is the friction between those two surfaces. So the frictional force must be to the right. So I'll call that F1. So there's my free body diagram for mass of the one kilogram block. I'm going to do the same thing again. This time I'm going to do it for the two kilogram block. There's a downward force, which is M2G. There's an upward force, which is the ground pushing back on the block, which must be N2. There's the force to the right, which we call F. And there must be a force to the left, which is called F1. And you'll notice that these two forces are these two forces are the same force. You'll notice they're the same force, F1 and F1, but they're oppositely directed. That's because of Newton's third law. Newton's third law told us that if object A, which in this case would be the one kilogram block, exerts a force on object two, two kilogram block, then the object two must exert an equal and opposite force back on object one. These two are reaction forces to each other. If if there's friction between the two blocks and one block is ex, uh, experiencing friction from the other, then the vice versa is also true. That's why these two forces appear as arrows in opposite directions in our free body diagrams. Now, the question is, are we done with labeling forces in our second block? Well, we have one more block, which is the force of the two of the one kilogram block pushing down on the two kilogram block. So I have another force vector in here. I'm going to use red so that I can see it on top of my other vector. And that must be the block one pushing down on block two is the same as block two pushing up on block one from our original diagram. So again, by Newton's third law, this must be N1. I think I have all of my forces in place now, and so I can write down Newton's second law for each of these diagrams. So I'm going to go back to black here and uh, write Newton's second law for these diagrams. So this is the sum of the forces. Whoops, I'm still in red. Oh, well. Some of the forces in the x direction for diagram one and some of the forces in the y direction for diagram one. So I have four forces, two in the x direction, two in the y direction. So when there's the two forces in the x direction, I should get two terms in my sum. I should get minus t plus f1 equals zero. And I should get n1 minus one kilogram times g equals zero. Y zero, normally it's equal to MA. In the static situation where the object is not moving, the acceleration is zero. Therefore, the right-hand side of the Newton's second law is going to be zero. I can now proceed with 
writing the same equations for the sum of the forces in the x direction for um, for diagram number two. So in the x direction, I have two forces. I have the applied force F minus the friction force F1. And in this case, the block is free to move. So I have to write it equal to MA, which would be the mass of the object I'm currently working on, which was M2 times its acceleration. So putting in our value for M2, this must equal two kilograms times A. And I do the sum of the forces in the y direction, which gives me three vectors. Therefore, I should have three terms, N2 minus N1 minus M2G equals. Now, is this block free to move in the, in the y direction? No, it's not. It's constrained to move on the surface of the, of the plane. So we know that that must add up to or equal 0, because the acceleration in the y direction is 0. Now we have several equations with several unknowns, and I can begin to use a variety of co combination techniques to get rid of values that we need to know. So I'm going to come back over here to, to the sum of the forces from the first equation, and I can see that N1 is equal to um, 1 kilogram times 9.8 meters per second squared, or 9.8 newtons. So the first block is pushing down on the second block with 9.8 newtons. We need N1 in this equation to the right, so I can write N2 is equal to N2 is equal to Oh, I forgot a force. Just occurred to me while I was thinking here that uh, I forgot a force in one of our equations. It hasn't affected us yet. But let me go back to this second diagram, this two kilogram diagram, and I forgot all about the friction between the two kilogram block and the ground. And so as I try to pull the block to the right here in the diagram, I can imagine the ground is going to try to resist that. So there's another force in play here, and that's going to be the force, which I would call F2, the frictional force of the block on the ground which means that I'm going to need to fix my equation here. Right in here, there needs to be a third term in the x direction. So this is going to be minus F2, minus F2. So we will get to that when we, uh, uh, when we try to solve. So sorry for leaving out my force. So here I'm going to come back to solving this one. N2 minus minus 9.8 meters per second, or sorry, newtons, uh, minus M2G, which would be 2 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared, has to equal 0. So I have N2 must equal uh, minus 9.8 minus 19.6, which is 29.4 meters per second squared. The minus sign goes away because I took that over to the other side of the equation, or you can also think of N2 is pointing upward, so it should be positive. And I once again wrote the, the wrong units here, Newtons. Okay, so I'm working my way back through getting all of my results, and now I've got it. Now I have to look at that equation for um, for x direction. So we're going to come back to this equation and hopefully solve it um, for the uh, acceleration that we want. Uh, I guess I need uh, to put in values here. So F, so I'm really doing the equation F minus F1 minus F2 equals 2 kilograms times A. The applied force was up here, you'll see, is 100 newtons. So 100 newtons minus frictional force. Each frictional force is equal to mu times the normal force that applies to it. So this is going to equal mu times N1 minus mu times N2, and that must equal 2 kilograms times A. I should have everything I need to do to solve the problem now. 100 newtons minus 0.2, which was my coefficient of friction that I gave, times N1, which is 9.8 newtons, 
minus 0 0.2 times N2, which was this one, 29.4 Newtons, equals 2 times A. The only variable left in all that is A. I can now do the algebra or the arithmetic, whichever you want to call it, and solve for A. So A looks like it turns out to be 46.1 meters per second squared. Pretty big number, probably because uh, a 100 Newton force acting on a two kilogram object is a pretty large uh, force. So it's like a real tough jerk on this, uh, on this line. So there you go, a fully executed problem where we carefully drew the free body diagrams of our um, situation, getting all of the forces that are implied. And as you can see from my mistake earlier that I left out one of my frictional forces, that it's important that you think through all of your forces very clearly and get them all in your free body diagram. Um, I hope this helps show how to do a friction problem using free body diagrams.